In 2005, the first God of War game was released, and after all its success, instantly turned into a staple franchise for PlayStation. With several more mainline installments and prequels on the PSP, the series had many fans hooked with its satisfying combat in the awesome Greek mythology. But despite their quality, as time passed and these games kept following each other up, one thing became abundantly clear. Generally, they were very much the same games. It's been a rough time for Sony Santa Monica. The studio had its major new IP cancelled in 2014, and the most recent God of War Ascension was received with mixed reviews. Fatigue for the series had reached a climax, leaving the studio to make a hard decision, but it was the only choice. The franchise needed a fundamental shift. God of War on PlayStation 4 boldly throws away all the conventions that we've known, leaving only the story of Kratos at its core. A new setting, combat, even camera angle, the list of changes seemed daunting at first, but having beaten the game now, I'm incredibly happy to say that absolutely all of it was for the better. After killing all the gods of Olympus, Kratos left Greece and traveled to the Norse realms. He starts a new family and gets a son, Atreus. God of War picks up many years later at another emotional low point for Kratos. His wife has passed away and her final wish was for her ashes to be scattered at the highest mountain peak. This is the starting point for what will be a long, challenging but amazing journey. The main characters start out unprepared. Kratos feels not only he himself, but especially his son, are just not ready for this yet. You can feel his struggle to become a better person, leaving his days of pure anger in the past. He now tries to place himself in other people's shoes to understand their motivations too, and that's something we wouldn't see before. Atreus is quite the opposite, he's young, unexperienced, and so he doesn't quite know how to act in certain situations yet. Over the course of the game, the bond between the two develops very organically. Obviously I can't give anything away, but the story in this game is great. The opening hour is emotional, epic and in your face, immediately setting the tone for what this game is trying to achieve. The few hours that follow may feel a little slow in comparison, but the pacing eventually picks up, and once it gets going, I had that feeling that I just couldn't stop anymore. It's one massive roller coaster ride that, as a newcomer to the series, you can fully enjoy without the need to have played the other games. For the longtime fan, though, there are plenty of moments that will make you very happy and filled with nostalgia. Now you won't meet a whole lot of characters along the way, but it allowed for those you do encounter to get plenty of screen time, and the result is that they are all fantastic additions with their own character development. From Brock and Sindri, the merchant brothers with a broken relationship who you keep bumping into, to the witch in the woods with her own reasons to help you out. There is a particular person you'll meet halfway through who is not only awesome and hilarious, but has a huge impact on the rest of the game. Finally, there's the way the story is told. You've likely heard about the fact that this game has no camera cuts, and therefore constantly follows you around, making it all feel like you're in the moment. It's not as big of a deal as I had hoped, due to the interruptions of the menu screens or when you die, which brings the effect down a little bit, but overall, the direction of the cutscenes combined with how they blend into the gameplay deserves all the praise. Your anger, you can get lost in it. The path ahead is difficult. And you, Atreus, are clearly not ready. Graphically, God of War is up there with the best looking games on PS4. Actually, if there's one thing I had to mention that impressed me the most, it's the sheer amount of not only insanely gorgeous, but expansive areas. I can't even imagine the effort that must have gone into realizing this. The game also has a beautiful orchestral soundtrack that accompanies every fight or emotional scene. I was surprised as well with how polished the entire package was. Sure, there were minor clipping issues with your equipment and armor, some lines would be repeated to the point where you started noticing it, and I heard Kratos shout commands even though I just saw him drop dead to the ground after failing to win a fight. 
All in all though, these feel like nitpicks, as there were no major bugs that truly affected my experience. While the game plays in 30fps on the regular PlayStation 4, owners of a PS4 Pro have the choice between a higher resolution or performance mode. The latter of these is particularly interesting, as it boosts the frame rate as much as it can for each scenario. It's therefore easy to notice differences when traveling between the smaller and bigger spaces, but in most occasions it offers a significantly smoother experience. Sure, the game plays just fine on the original models, but once I went back from performance mode to try out the lower frame rate option, I just couldn't do it anymore. God of War can be added to the list of games that will make PS4 Pro owners happy to have upgraded, and we all know that list isn't a large one. This way. But if there's one area where most of the changes have taken place, it's obviously the gameplay. This has had many fans worried, as the previous games were known to have incredibly satisfying combat already. I was one of those, and even though I personally felt ready for something else, I just didn't know if I'd end up liking the changes as much. Fortunately, all those doubts were for nothing, because it's honestly even better. Combat with the axe feels amazing. Using these shoulder buttons, you can hack and slash into enemies with it, throw and recall it at any time, or switch to your fists for certain types of foes who are resistant to it. Cleverly rolling away or using your shield to counter keeps momentum going, which will eventually lead to a brutal execution move. And don't worry, this game is every bit as brutal as the original ones. But the axe isn't just a weapon, it's also a tool you use to solve environmental puzzles. Whether it is to keep gates up using its freezing abilities, or to destroy hidden seals for the optional chests which will grant you a bigger health and rage bar. There are more puzzles overall than before, which means they are generally shorter too, so the pacing doesn't get dragged down. As you travel through the world, you'll quickly find certain doors that are locked, or chests covered in thorn bushes. In later parts of the game, you'll learn several new abilities that will make you want to backtrack to reach those areas you couldn't get to before. And then there's the character customization, which is huge. You can craft new armor, which will change the looks of both Kratos and Atreus too, but also upgrade your weapons, apply runes to boost your stats, unlock new skills, level those skills up, it goes on and on. In the beginning it was almost overwhelming how many options were available, but as you'll get more familiar with the systems, eventually you'll come to appreciate it. However, not every attack seems as useful in direct combat, but fortunately you get to choose the style of playing you prefer. The combat system will start out basic and needs to grow on you though. In the first few hours you'll have barely any moves unlocked, and the enemies are pretty standard. Once you get used to the controls, start unlocking new skills and the game really takes off, trust me, you won't want it any other way. Now the game itself is very linear. That's great because it allows for the story to be told very naturally, to surprise you with new and awesome locations from beginning to end. That being said, a few hours in it will somewhat open up and reveal that there is more to do than just the main quest. The entire world is connected, the map shows the complete path you've taken so far. There is a hub-like area at the center surrounded by water. From here you can freely travel to parts of the world to either continue the story or wander off and do side quests or find optional collectibles. You get to these places with your boat, but the amount of traveling you do is not nearly as much as I was afraid of before. It also allows for some downtime, giving Kratos and Atreus plenty of moments to discuss the journey so far and share some insight about the lore of the world. Once you get to any place of significance, there are portals that allow you to quickly fast travel to areas you've already been to before. After spending a little less than 20 hours in God of War, I managed to beat the main story, and I did so the day after receiving the game. You might imagine I was simply hooked. I did all of this on the normal so-called balanced difficulty mode. While I generally found the game to be very doable with this setting, some of the optional content afterwards can give you a noticeably hard time. 
Now the game allows you to switch difficulty settings at any point you like, and no trophies or in-game rewards are tied to it, but there is a so-called Give Me God of War difficulty setting that prevents you from switching, but that's only if you're ready to throw your controller against the wall. But even after I was done with the main story, with around 25% overall completion displayed on the map, there was so much more to do. The side quests, called favors, aren't just typical fetch activities. They come with their own separate areas that you won't get to see if you only play the main story, and will even contain a cutscene here and there. Sure, I didn't enjoy doing them as much as the main story, but by completing one in between here and there, it's a cool way to increase your game time. There are optional Valkyrie bosses who can be extremely difficult and will have their own patterns of attacks that you need to learn, making them straight up play out like Dark Souls boss fights. That being said, I also found there to be some real issues with the side content. The tracker can sometimes be a little buggy and send you in the wrong directions. Some activities can not even be tracked or give you any hints whatsoever, leaving you completely clueless as to where to look for that one final object to complete a quest. It's also unclear how to obtain certain resources to max out your stats, and the game in general leaves you pretty confused about what to do next after beating the main story itself. Despite those complaints, I had a blast the entire way through, and best of all, the gameplay never felt repetitive to me. All I can think of right now is that I want to play more. God of War is simply everything that I wanted it to be. With each change that seemed too drastic, that felt like it could bring the game down, it honestly only proved to be for the better. Sony Santa Monica had always been a very talented studio, but for a long time was just not talked about anymore. With this game, they've managed to show us that they're back, and better than ever, claiming a spot right at the top with the highest tier of developers. God of War will be remembered, not only as the restart that blew new life into a series that was on the brink of becoming stagnant, but genuinely as one of the games that defined this generation. Thanks a lot everyone for watching my review on God of War. If you enjoy all my content, then please leave a like or share the video with your friends to help my channel grow. But most important of all, please support me at patreon.com slash robingaming for just $1 per month or more if you can miss it. Doing so will grant you early access to videos and a couple of other rewards. Only your support makes it possible for me to sink all this time into writing, editing and sharing all these videos with you. Therefore, I want to especially thank the people displayed on screen, who support me over at Patreon right now. With that being said, I'd like to thank you a lot for watching, and hope to see you again next time.